guys, so first of all, if you recognize this outfit, it's because I'm pre-filming these videos because I'm in the Netherlands right now. And I didn't want to leave you guys without content, but I don't really have time to film right now. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, we are now in an audition season. Pre-screenings are in, you're nervously waiting to hear back from your schools, and auditions are looming. And I know that's a scary thing, trust me, <laughs> I remember. But I wanted to talk a little bit about auditions and what you can expect, so that way you go in a little bit more informed, a little bit more prepared. Unfortunately, the first thing I have to tell you is that you can never really predict what your audition is gonna be like. Every single school has a different system and a different setup, and you never really know what you're gonna get. It can be anything from you in the professor's studio in almost a lesson style thing, to you in an auditorium playing for a panel of woodwind professors or whatever kind of professors. And anything in between, quite honestly. I've had panels in an office, I've had like a teacher just staring at me while I played in an office, I've had a panel in an auditorium, I've had someone coach me from an auditorium. It really is really hard to tell what you're gonna get before you get in there. But almost having that idea that you don't necessarily know is gonna be helpful. I know that's scary and I know all of you are kind of staring at the screen right now like, really Robin, this is not helpful, you're scaring us more. But knowing that things are unpredictable makes it a little bit easier to roll with the punches. <laughs> what you can do is, if you have friends who are also auditioning, ask them. If they have like an earlier weekend that, than you're going, you can definitely ask them. And even if you don't have resources or people that you know, when you get there, you can ask, how is it set up? What am I expecting? A lot of the audition volunteers are actually students at the school and they're more than happy to help you because they remember how scary it was. One of the biggest things is plan enough time to get there and relax before your audition. I always recommend getting there the night before or the day before even because you don't know where you're going necessarily. You're in a brand new place. Uh, if you're doing the auditions by yourself, you have to figure out how to get around, where you're going and everything like that. And that can be really, really nerve wracking. And if you get there the same day as your audition, you might not have the time to mentally prepare as well as you should. So definitely plan weekends rather than just single days if you can. I know it's expensive and hotels and everything like that are hard. If you're applying as a grad student, um, most of us have friends with couches. Uh, definitely uh, trawl your resources for free housing. If you're an undergrad and don't know people, you can email the school and see if there's someone you can stay with. Sometimes they'll allow you to board with a current student or they'll give you ideas of where to stay and things like that. That way you have everything planned out and you have a better idea of what kind of time you're gonna need. With that, I also recommend getting to campus like way earlier than you need to on your audition day. Worst comes to worst, you go find a coffee shop and sit there for a little bit. But best case scenario, it gives you the time to explore, figure out where you need to go, warm up, do everything that you need to do without this pressure of the audition looming on you. Granted, it's always gonna be there, but at least this way, you're doing it in a way that's comfortable and relaxed and you can do your process the whole way. Do not be afraid to take a practice room. It's really hard, especially at a school that doesn't have a lot of practice rooms, to feel comfortable like being in a room for a long time. But audition weekends are a thing where you are the priority and the students that go to the school currently kind of have to deal. We're gonna complain about it bitterly. And once you're in music school, it's your prerogative to also complain about audition weekends bitterly. But we also all realize that at that point in time, we're students there, we're already here, we don't have that stress. You guys need the time. And it can be a little nerve wracking trying to find a space to warm up. If worse comes to worse, ask a student if they can help you. A lot of the time, they're more than happy because they, again, understand what's going on. And if you can't find a space, definitely go to the front desk or whoever's checking people in for auditions and go, hey, is there, are there other rooms I can use? And maybe they can even go kick someone out. Anyone who's been at music school knows that practice space is 
sacred and during audition weekends it's even harder to find but it is really really important to find some space to warm up and really take your time because that's really going to help you the most. When you're in the audition itself you definitely want to be professional and clear, be confident, and expect them to ask you questions. A lot of the time they'll ask you like what you want to do, why, why you're auditioning there, um, what interests you about the school. So be knowledgeable, be willing to talk, and think about your answers in advance. A lot of these questions are pretty predictable. A lot of them are about like, what do you want to do in music? <laughs> And even if you don't have a great answer for that, you can go, well, I'm still trying to figure that out. I know I want to be in music and I want to take this time to explore what options I have. I know that the school has this program and this program. Uh, my undergrad had this program called Comprehensive where you were allowed to take classes in various different fields so you could kind of figure out what you wanted to do without locking yourself into a performance major or locking yourself into a music ed major or anything like that. So knowing that that program exists and talking about it is something that you're gonna get points for because it means that you did research on the school. And definitely remember what audition rep you're supposed to be playing. I had a really um, interesting moment at Indiana, which amusingly enough was the school I got into, where I couldn't remember which excerpts I had submitted for them. And so I just kind of let them pick, which was a terrible idea. Um, if they ask you what you want to play, be prepared with an answer. And don't do what I did where I was like, well, just pick one, because I could not remember. Um, yeah, that was embarrassing. But a lot of the times they'll go, oh, what do you want to start with first? And don't just waffle, have an answer prepared. If they don't ask you, then fine. But if they do, this way you go, okay, I want to start with this one. This is the one I'm confident in. And it puts your best foot forward and you're comfortable and you're not like scared because you just spent this like 30 seconds desperately trying to figure out which piece you wanted to start with. Not worth it. And the last thing is be prepared for a music theory test. Some schools do it, some schools don't, but it is something that you might have to do and don't let it get you caught off guard. A lot of schools will tell you that it's going to happen, but I remember my audition at Vanderbilt, there were a bunch of people who didn't expect to have to take that test and were really, really frazzled because of it. It's something that they ask up for, and it's not necessarily going to make or break your audition. It, sometimes it's just to test the level or what, how much you know. It might not even have an effect on your overall acceptance, but it is something that they sometimes make you do in audition weekend. If you're in, applying for grad school, they usually don't make you do it because they make you do it once you're in school, which is super fun. Especially if you're applying for undergrad, you might not have had very much music theory. Um, you can get review books like AP music theory review books that work pretty well for those kinds of exams as well because they're kind of the same. And that way you can have a little bit of guidance into what it is. And it might be worthwhile to find someone to help you a little bit before your audition if that is something that they tell you you have to do. So, I hope this was helpful. If you guys have anything that you guys want me to talk about about auditions, please let me know since that's definitely the priority for the next few months for a lot of you guys. If you like this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to support me more, check out my Patreon and I will see you guys on Thursday.